I know the last decade or so has been um, frustrating, has had a lot of emotions packed into it for you. Can you just describe how you're feeling today learning that Kiska has died after all these efforts that you've been making and others uh, to try to, to save her from captivity at Marineland? There's a level of shock, there's a level of sadness, but largely I'm angry. I'm angry that her suffering was allowed to continue unmitigated for as long as it did while we were providing evidence of it, while we were screaming to the top of our lungs, forget about it. Um, you know, I wish if, if only half the energy that is being used today to wish, uh, to wish rest in peace Kiska and the condolences and everything, if even half that energy was put in to advocating for her, you know, I wonder where we could have gotten. How frustrating is that for you to be in this moment where all of these people, I imagine, are sending you these condolences, all these organizations are, uh, but they weren't necessarily there in the support uh, of trying to free Kiska. I tend to g give my support to people that sacrifice for the animals and the people that are there 24-7. Uh, this happens all the time. Animals are in the headlines, so I'm accustomed to seeing it. You know, sign this petition. Everyone wants the email list so that they can ask for some monies around Christmas time. Uh, this is sort of just what becomes. But uh, for those of us who have been whistleblowers uh, of animal cruelty from Marineland, former employees, if you will, those of us who continue to advocate, this is a 24 seven uh, mission. It's not stopped for us over the past decade. And frankly, despite Kiska not being her, here, uh, her, her suffering will be avenged. We're not letting Marineland get away with this. What does that look like? That looks like protest. That looks like, uh, you know, I, 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 I'd like to solicit uh, some prosecution. Um, at, at, at whatever level that's necessary, but uh, you know, there's talk of possibly uh, having a, holding a demonstration at the Ontario Legislature. There's talk of uh, different things that can be done, but certainly anything we could do to amplify her voice, her suffering, and not allow for her death to, to merely be in vain, then uh, then then the better we're all off. You got to spend time with uh, not just Kiska, but many other uh, uh, animals that were there, many other mammals. You got to understand how they work, uh, you know, how they think, how they operate, how they feel, most importantly. What was your relationship with Kiska and what did you notice? What, did you, what can you tell us about Kiska? The thing about Kiska is every new trainer always learnt uh, with Kiska because she was the most docile animal. She, was the, she had the calmest demeanor and, uh, you know, she was the most playful, if you will, given the circumstances. She always was the most trusted whale. You never had to concern yourself too much with, uh, with turning your back on her, whereas with the other ones, you always just had to worry a little bit. Not, not so much worry, but you had to keep your alert up. But with Kiska, it wasn't the case. She was, uh, she was special. She was beloved. She was a particularly small whale. She came in small, and she was notably sickly. So if the fact that she lived as long as she did really was a testament to her, uh, to her spirit and will to live. Uh, she really was an amazing animal. Um, it, it's hard to really surmise in words just how special she was, but you know, it's certainly an experience that I'm, I'm grateful for. And it, and it frankly changed the entirety of my life because now I'm on the flip side, able to advocate and, uh, and help represent her voice. When you think of over 40 years in captivity, I believe that it's 43 uh, is the exact number. Um, that much time in captivity, I believe five, uh, five babies, none of which outlasted, none of which lived, really. So, some not even long enough to get a name, if I'm correct. Um, when you hear about all of that, and that comes to mind, and, and that's part of the legacy uh, of Kiska at Marine Land, um, what do you think? I think that with the passing of Bill S-203, a law that bans uh, whale, dolphin, and porpoise captivity in all of Canada, uh, Kiska's suffering, Kiska's death, Kiska's life and legacy will be that that inspired a great deal of change. And with her death, that up, she represents the last orca that will ever be in captivity in Canada. So uh, I'm glad that in, in some capacity, uh, she'll always represent uh, the power of a very powerful movement and what can be done when people rise up. What has it been like to be on social media today and get this level of response? Is, you know, the, the person that's really attached to um, what happens at Marine Land with these animals? 
It can be overwhelming at times because uh, I'm still trying to process what's happened while also trying to express it to some. Uh, you don't want to miss a beat. You want to keep your apps open. Right now I'm reaching for my phone to see, you know, which other media outlets calling because, you know, there's a responsibility when you're advocating for animals and that's to be present and available at all times and especially during these ones. So, you know, I make myself available uh, so that in, in the exact capacity that I hope to tell uh, that, that Kiska's story is told that I'm able to tell it. So, um, you know, my face is buried in my phone all day, but that's okay. It's nothing new over the past decade. You filmed, uh, and, and there was a video that, that went viral, I believe, a year ago, uh, which was of Kiska slamming uh, her body against her tank, trying, and, and I believe for a long time have also been bleeding. I, I, I she, had a, she had some bleeding issues with her tail. Yeah, uh, I think it's something that you had pointed out. Mm -hmm. Going back, I think, further than... Uh, That's 10 years ago. Yeah, um, so there was issues there. You, you, you said, you know, sickly. Uh, there was health issues and concerns for a very long time. Um, maybe this death was almost expected, knowing maybe how Marineland and your uh, dealings with them and uh, how, maybe how they treat uh, their animals. Can you just speak to the death itself and I guess what could have been done? And I know you've talked about euthanasia also as a possibility and what what should have been done in this situation so that's just a hard one uh, to consider uh, euthanasia at marineland has never been done before it's never been uh, considered for whales and dolphins uh, so that's not it's not been done in the case of seals and sea lions yes um sea world that i understand they've done it before but it's not an easy process it's hard to rationalize what is best sometimes and in these cases, but the one thing I lean on every time is when there are people advocating for and fighting for you, there's hope. I wish we could have provided Kiska with even e just a little bit more hope, a chance at maybe swimming in the ocean, even if only for a brief period, because today it's easy to rationalize that that would have made sense. We could have made, we could have done that effort, but only two or three days ago, it would have been rationalized that, you know, she's too sickly for such an endeavor and, you know, we can't risk doing that. But what risk was there really? The risk was, in the end, to offer Kiska a little bit of hope. And I think that just would have been the, the greatest thing we could have offered her. Well, over the years, are you frustrated, disappointed? What is the emotion that comes to mind? What is the, the thought process of, you know, we're having this conversation about, her being out of captivity and it's 2023, there's laws that have been passed prior to. Should this have been done a lot earlier? And do you think we wouldn't be here talking about Kiska as the loneliest orca and who was in captivity, but in uh, maybe a freer setting? Yeah, the big problem with laws and property laws is, uh, you know, you, you go and enact new laws and then, you know, the properties grandfathered in so unfortunately for marine lands current whales there's there's little hope uh to an extent of their being saved unless something gets done imminently uh the concern of that is those conditions and are ever deteriorating and we know that you know upwards of 25 beluga whales have died in the last two and a half years at marine land and now with kiska passed away you know what is going to be done to provide hope for the few whales remaining um, you know, we banned the breeding, which is good news. So Marineland used to breed uh, between five and seven per year. So if the law has been passed since 2019, do the math, that's an excess of 20 saved souls. But, uh, you know, I do wish something more could be done for these animals. But the unfortunate part, at least for the time being, is despite being outlawed, their captivity is still legal at Marineland. Uh Kiska's death to you, uh, what does that represent? Uh, you, you've talked about it being the last uh, of uh, an orca in, in captivity. Uh, d does this present like a changing of the tides, uh, not just in Canada, but hopefully you know, in other parts of the world where, where, where these animals uh, and these whales are, are kept in captivity? Kiska's death symbolically is the death of Marineland. Marineland will never 
uh, rebound from this. They're never going to be a viable business. That we understand they're for sale and finished already. There's an understanding. I mean, it's 2023, frankly, the, the public have spoken. Uh, so they're finished. I like that Kiska represents that. It's a sort of, uh, you know, she gets to hold uh, to a certain extent, her head in high regard. You know, this is the end of that. I certainly hope to inspire more places. Uh, to, you know, there's a lot of problems in the U.S. Currently in Florida, in Miami, there's a lone remaining orca named Tokite as we speak. Uh, I've been there four, uh, four times this year alone. We flew helicopters over her to get a look at her condition. Her condition is not much better than Kiska. I had hopes and aspirations that maybe the two of them can find hope together but it looks like we're just gonna have to continue our fight and advocate and hope that what happened with Kiska can be spared of Tokite. Well, uh, just going back to Kiska, we were talking about, you know, potentially getting her out to a place that might provide her hope. Uh, there is a place that, that is supposedly talked about. Uh, do you wanna just talk about, I, I guess, their initiative? I believe it's the Whale Sanctuary Project. Yeah, uh, so I, I stopped, listen. The Whale Sanctuary Project have been promising that they would be open uh, by 2019 for how many years now? It's every other year it's going to happen. It's every other year. I went to the sanctuary site. They don't have building permits. This is not a viable project. Frankly, it gets exhaustive to hear that uh, they, they keep calling themselves, you know, the, somehow the answer to this. And yet uh, you take a look at the finances alone. The finances demonstrate clearly they are not a viable solution. So what I'm seeing is a lot of wasted time and a lot of uh, wasted resources. I'd like to see something a little bit more concentrated and something that uh, better benefits the animals rather than disproportionately benefit the humans that are operating these projects. When many people uh, either visited Marine Land or didn't really know about Kiska, to those that don't know about Kiska, what are you hoping they, they learn from knowing about her legacy uh, and just the, the pain and I guess suffering that you know, you and many others believe she felt over this uh, 40 plus years. I hope that the empathy that people are feeling right now, that feeling in the pit of their stomach, I hope they can uh, encapsulate that, hold on to that, and maybe transfer it to other animals because there are other animals currently in perilous situations, including upwards of 35, but possibly up to 38 uh, beluga whales still at Marineland. There's still five dolphins over there. So the, tragi the, the tragic death of Kiska, albeit uh, right now ruminating in everyone's mind, the same suffering is being experienced by, uh, at this point, over 40 uh, remaining whales and dolphins at Marineland. So uh, what has to happen is there needs to be an invigorated fight to end their captivity here in Canada so that we can eradicate it forever. And we have to find a solution for those animals that, that, that restores their sort of dignity rather than send them off somewhere where they're going to start jumping through flame and hoops again. Uh, the last question that I had was about that video, actually, um, where you see uh, Kiska's head just banging and banging and banging. When you see that video, what do you think, what do you believe Kiska was going through at that moment? The level of boredom that she was experiencing made her rationalize self-harm just so that she can feel alive. It's the moment you try to rationalize that in your own mind, you understand the depth of the suffering that she was enduring both physically and mentally. I put myself, I try to put myself in her shoes. And this is why, uh, this is why I, I become so enraged sometimes, I become so emotional because uh, again, that's an injustice that's just not justifiable. So uh, again, my hopes is uh, that there'll be, uh, th there'll be some uh, atonement for her suffering and that you know, those who are responsible for having allowed it for so long and to such a degree, um, you know, uh, come to uh, a level of accountability. Anything else that you want to share or say? Friends don't let friends go to Marineland. Tell your friends.